energy in this room. So we'll begin um, today talking first with a show of hands. Anyone here in the college admissions process from the high school guidance side? Show of hands. Okay, how about from the college or university side? Anyone in admissions? Excellent. Okay, and how about parents? Anyone have uh, students, uh, children who are thinking about college these days? Excellent. So for you, this topic is very close to home. We're going to talk about how technology can humanize college admissions. So I am not a technologist, but I love to apply technology to make things better, faster, and cheaper. In 1999, I co-founded something called Military.com. And Military.com was a community, a social network for service members and veterans. And the thing about the military community is there's a lot of benefits. But unfortunately, they're often fraught with bureaucracy. And uh, what you really want to do if you're going to try to use those benefits is you want to find somebody who's used them before you, someone who's walked in your shoes ahead of you. And then you can ask them, What's the inside scoop? How does it work? So if you want to use GI Bill for college, you find somebody who's done that. Or maybe you want to get, leave the service and you want to get a job in a certain city. You can find a veteran who will take your call and help you. So the military community has been helping one another for a long time. They want to help each other. What technology just enabled was to make it easier to extend that helping hand. And in fact, the technology works best when it's totally invisible and the connections between people are just simple. So this was kind of on my mind as I had the opportunity to meet a young man named Nick Hagen who had an epiphany about college admissions. So as a high school senior, Nick received his standardized test scores back and he worried a little bit that those test score results wouldn't put him on the radar of his dream school. So he built a portfolio of his basketball, his computer science, his photography, and he sent it in with his application with a tagline, I am more than a test score. So lo and behold, he gets accepted. And he gets to campus and he realizes there's lots of students just like him. They were alienated by, and confused by the admissions process. So then he started talking to admissions counselors, get their perspective. And even at Princeton University, which gets lots and lots of applications, they shared an interesting story. The orchestra director had come to the dean of admissions and said, the players in the brass section are graduating, and if we want to play the kind of music we want to play, we need to replace them. And unfortunately, the dean of admissions said, I don't, really have, a, I don't have a tool to do that. Right? I can only hope that they apply. So <laughs> Nick th uh, thought a lot about this because he was using social media technology to keep in touch with his friends and um, you know, stay up with parties and dating and everything else. And he thought, boy, social networking technology should be applied to college admissions. There should be a social network for college admissions. Students are more than test scores. Colleges are more than rankings, and if you could help both sides tell their story better, right, and tell it to the right people, everybody would win. So he started an organization called Zinch, and it was meant to make it a cinch for Generation Z to get in. <laughs> and uh, so he uh, put that together, and I was so compelled by that idea that I and many other people joined in. And in fact, it's, the idea has attracted a lot of great talent. One of the other speakers um, we'll hear from today, Dale Stevens, we had the great fortune to meet. He came to us after hearing about the idea and spent some time with us a couple summers ago. And uh, despite all this energy and all this possibility, it's pretty interesting because if you go to many high schools across the country and you ask students, tell us a few words to describe the college admissions process it's pretty clear that some common themes emerge. Test scores, deadlines, stress. Stress comes up over and over again. Not surprising, but some students feel really pressured, right? It's expected that they'll go to college, they've got to run the gauntlet, 
and they're just hoping that some faceless, omnipotent decision maker will, you know, someday send them a fat envelope. And for so many students, college admissions decisions become some kind of judgment on their own self-worth. And for parents, it's some kind of ruling on their success as a parent. It's dehumanizing. There are other students, too, who want badly to go to college. But they are trying to navigate a very confusing process with little guidance and even very little picture of what's on the other side. What is college life like? And for these people, unfortunately, many of them opt out of the process of higher education entirely. And of those that go on, 50% will drop out or transfer out of the first college they go to. That's dehumanizing. And if you go around to the other side of the table, to the admissions staffs at many colleges and universities, it's no picnic either. So there have been big budget cuts in higher education. So people are doing more with less, but there's no less pressure to hit those numbers, to fill or shape that class. And it's tricky for them. These are admissions people. These are people people, right? And their staffs have been downsized. They've lost team members. And because travel budgets are cut, they're actually spending less time with students. That's dehumanizing. So I've picked a pretty bleak picture, but we're extremely hopeful. We're extremely hopeful because every single one of us in this room is empowered to make a change, to improve the process for the students and the colleges you love. Transformation begins with one very simple change, and it costs nothing. Change your mind. Change your mind about the process, and the new mindset was really encapsulated well in the words of Frank Sachs, who's a, a great college counselor, and he said, admissions is a match to be made, not a game to be won. And that mindset changes a few things. Every student should know that they can get into college. They should be ambitious in their applications, and it is true that they may not get in where they want to go. They may not get into their first choice. They will get in somewhere. And as an employer and as somebody who has walked around the planet for many years, I can tell you that where you get in is a lot less important than what you make of yourself when you get there. The other is, we hear a lot about the cost of higher education. And it is hot. But there are part-time programs. There are community colleges. There's four-year options. There's all kinds of working and, and studying combinations. There's organizations like those, like Ashoka and others, that are here to support students. This isn't about hand out. It's about hand up. And every student should know that college is possible. There are prudent ways to invest in themselves. And then finally, technology is going to help us. So, what's really important is that students view the college admissions process as a process of self-discovery, as a learning process in and of itself. It's not about putting checks in blocks or um, filling their dad's card or padding their resume and their applications. Admissions counselors will tell us that they actually don't want just a bunch of well-rounded students. They want a well-rounded class. They want leaders. They want people who have gone out and done interesting things. So the advice to people is uh, do things. Um, tell that story. Be true to yourself. And it's no clearer um, than at conferences like this that it's not about fitting the mold. Because increasingly, success and significance and changing the world belongs to people who will break the mold. The key is being true to yourself and finding where you will thrive. And finding where you thrive, best way to do it is by word of mouth. So that's great when you've got supportive parents and high school counselors and um, great teachers. But what if you don't? What if you're the first in your family to go through the process? What if your peers aren't really thinking higher education is cool? They're not supporting you or encouraging you. And what if you're sharing a high school guidance counselor 
with hundreds of other classmates. Well, your circle, your social network, is going to fail you. And what's worse is, even if you get into college, right, you won't have the social network to support you. So this is why we need something different. We need a network that's not just about people you know, but a network that's about people you want to know. Maybe people like you that are in a particular college that you're interested in. Maybe it's people from your high school, and where they're at the different um, colleges and where they're succeeding. And maybe it's experts or nonprofit organizations with resources to help people like you. That's not your social graph. You don't know these people. That's the student graph. And the belief in that idea um, caused Zinch to come together with CHEG, which is a network of college students, to try to build the technology that will enable the student graph. The student graph is important because at the end of the day, relationships matter. Not surprisingly, the number three reason for choosing a college is a relationship that the student has with someone else on campus. Now, it could be the admissions counselor, it could be a tour guide that they met, it might be a, um, an older student, but it's a relationship. And increasingly, these relationships are either initiated and or sustained virtually. And that's great news. Right now, students very cheaply, very easily, but very compellingly can connect with current students or admissions counselors via Skype. Super, right? And these virtual relationships are real to, people, to students and to digital natives today. And it's also important to make those student-to-student -student connections because today's students are kind of skeptical of the mouthpiece of the university. As students notice, it never rains in a college brochure. <laughs> <laughs> and the key for any university is if they have certain different types of students that they want to bring to campus, they should find students like that who are being successful and highlight and celebrate those people because they will resonate with the prospective students that they're seeking. So finally, we started out uh, the talk with a show of hands about uh, who would be involved in admissions. Truth is, all of us are involved in admissions. And you can not only change the game for students and colleges you know, but overall we can change the game for college access and graduation rates. All it takes is spreading the word. Students are more than test scores. Colleges are more than rankings. There are more ways than ever to get in and pay for college and fit is ultimately what matters most. So make it personal and let technology help. Thank you so much.